another pro for Michelle, another pro for the First Lady is, uh, is never mind the fact she's married to the most powerful person in the world, but Michelle Obama is actually revolutionizing home gardening by planting food garden on the lawn there at the White House, which is cool. The president obviously has a lot on his plate. Uh, it's busy for any president on any given day, but these days, of course, he's got to deal with a lot of stuff, including one of the issues that he's trying to push, which is the fight against climate change, whether or not the president's doing a good job, who knows. We all know how Canada, in terms of politics, feels about uh, the fight against the climate change issue, but it's arguably the biggest issue facing the world today. I mean, it's right there in the name, global warming. It's not like your backyard warming or my den warming, <laughs> it's global warming. The global climate crisis. Crisis, generally not a good thing. Scientists say that this decade is gonna be the warmest on record since the 1850s, uh, and not warm in that, oh, the fireplace is cozy. As warm like, my planet may burn in hell. <laughs> Canadian people say they take this seriously. This past hour, the hour, uh, past year, the hour launched something called One Million Acts of Green. When we launched One Million Acts of Green on the hour, we thought we could get Canadians to make green choices. One million green choices. We thought that. We weren't sure. <laughs> because a million is a lot, and you guys are busy people. But not only did you hit that mark, you surpassed that mark. So it was one of the highlights of the season for the hour is to be able to work with you directly, the people on that thing. We obviously have more work to do to solve climate change. Thank God Al Gore's around. Here's his bio. All right, let's face it, George. When it comes to global warming, no voice is more powerful than Al Gore. Our ability to live is what is at stake. Of course, everyone knows his documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. It made $49 million worldwide, the fifth highest grossing documentary ever. Plus, it won the Oscar for Best Documentary and helped Gore win the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. With all that, it's easy to forget. Gore spent 24 years in politics, most famously as vice president under Bill Clinton. The man standing beside me today has what it takes to lead this nation from the day we take office. And of course, in 2000, he nearly became president, winning the popular vote, but losing the battle for Florida and the White House to George W. Bush. I spoke with George W. Bush and congratulated him on becoming the 43rd president of the United States. And I promised him that I wouldn't call him back this time. Now, back in his younger days, Gore served as an army reporter in Vietnam. Then in 1976, he ran for office. At 28 years old, he won a seat in Congress and eventually held the first congressional meetings on climate change. Then in 1990, as a U.S. Senator, Gore worked to help developing nations build their economies while protecting the environment. So as you can see, he's no Johnny-come-lately. Now Al Gore has a new book. It's called Our Choice, A Plan to Solve the Climate Crisis. And surprise, surprise, it's printed on 100% recycled paper. Ladies and gentlemen, the former Vice President, Al Gore. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you again. You too. How are things? Things are good, thank you. you uh, things are good with you. Yeah, we're having fun. Things You're are a star. No, 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 no. I'm no vice president. Uh, uh, neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> that you walked in and I, and I saw you walk in the building and went, my God, that looks like the guy from 30 Rock. Uh, that, <laughs> that looks like the guy from 30 Rock. Um, how are you? Congratulations on your new book. Thank you very much. This is nice. Uh, our plan to solve the climate crisis. Right. Well, because a lot of people, it's sexy to talk about what the problem is. Finding a plan seems to be a lot harder. Yeah. When, when you uh, started to get into this process, what, did you have a full understanding of what it is you need to figure out? Or was it a journey? Yeah, I knew uh, in broad outline what I thought the solutions were, but as always, when you dig deeply into topics and go down below the first few layers, you find a lot of new stuff. And it was very exciting because I, I came away from the process with the uh, very strong uh, conviction that we have enough tools to solve three or four climate crises, and we've only got to solve one. Is it generational? There's a whole group of kids uh, who, who are growing up in a world with a black president, right? And you know that in yeah. 10 years it will be different. And, and that the, the, a lot of the people in the House and in the Senate, they're of a certain vintage. And <laughs> where this is not part of the conversation. They're, I resemble that remark. You, do you, <laughs> you might resemble it. Um, but the, well, it, in recycling, there's generations that, that understand what recycling is. When you walk into a public place and there isn't a recycling bin, you hold your can yeah. and don't know what to do with it, right? So I yeah. wonder if, the, if this... Not to be crass about it, but a whole group needs to be, to be gone before any real change is going to actually happen. Well, I, I think that uh, <laughs> uh, if we had the luxury of time, we could wait for that generational transfer 
of power to take place. But we don't have the luxury of time. Is it because people don't perceive it as an actual threat? Human nature is to just kind of go, yeah, yeah, whatever, I don't see it. People were, I mean, the Patriot Act was passed under the fear of the prospect of terrorism. Yeah. And even though a single significant event happened, there, there's more fear changed laws, yeah. but people don't do that now. Yeah, uh, human nature um, is what we have inherited from our ancestors. And because they survive specific kinds of threats, we're hardwired to respond to the same threats they survived. If uh, a rattlesnake uh, slithered across this floor, I guarantee you several rows would clear out almost uh, auto automatically. This audience is badass, man. Uh, they would, they'd stomp they, it they to would death. They would suck the venom to be stronger. Fair, but, fair, yeah. fair, fair enough, but many people would react. Fair enough. And uh, uh, other, other humans with weapons, you know, we've survived that. Uh, claws, spiders, fires. We respond automatically to the